America is America today because of the pioneers who had set the foundation for their country. And those countries, they love their country very much. So because they love their country very much, that has helped them to develop to be where they are today. But most of us as Africans, the moment we get something, we feel we don't belong to our community. Hmm. Then we go somewhere where people have already developed their area and to be part of that. So we have a long way to go. They now had to set aside a certain amount of money to fly myself from Africa to Europe. Was it your first time? It was my first time to <laughs> go to Europe. Okay. So there in Europe I spent almost 45 days just to see what those guys are doing. Then I discovered that they are very successful because they add value to whatever they produce before they sell. So I said, well, we have forests in Malawi. We have a lot of raw material in Malawi. Why can't I buy machineries so that I can be adding value to whatever I produce it before I take it to the market? Mm. So the first thing I did was to buy a machine for processing timber. So after buying that machine, I did that business for some time. Then I said, well, we, I have managed to help cut down the trees. How can I help to replace them? So I had to find a way of replacing the, the trees which I had managed to cut down. Mm. Then I left that business and went into other value addition businesses. While I was doing that, then I extended uh, my farming business in other areas. Then I have enough land that uh, now I can do whatever I want to do. How many acres of farm land do you have now? Well, I have many. Yeah, I have many acres. Being a farmer, mm. while well, I was just a child, land after land after land. Then now I'm giving back because I'm bringing students from universities to come to my place and help them to build their capacities so that if they are done, then they have to go home with something so that they can start their own businesses. They call you an industrialist. Yeah, well, um, everything. I'm a farmer. I am an industrialist. I am well. I do everything. To help our people. <laughs> so I, you have industries around that I, I, you can take me there to check it out. Yeah. Well, I have uh, a dairy company. Wow. Uh, I have uh, uh, a rice processing plant. Uh, well, I'm doing anything possible to create jobs and train people so that they can start on their own. My next question is, how many jobs have you created so far? How many people? Uh, have you? Well, I don't know how many people I have now. Yeah, I have uh, some people working at the hospital. I have uh, some people working at the, uh, some processing plants. I'm doing anything possible to help people stand on their feet. Your whole goal is to make impact in people's lives? Yeah, well, I have already explained about my background. So I don't want people to go through the same way I went. went. So I have at least to find a way. How can I help people to be successful in their lives? In my Bible, mm. in Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, they say, if you want to, people to respect you, 
or if you need anything to do good to you, you have to study that yourself. Then people will fall. So now I'm, what I'm trying to do is, how can I come up with a platform where the young generation can start their business and so on? How can I help those uh, who don't have ability to do A, B, C, D? So now that's my business. Where is this place? Uh, that's uh, my first home. Your first home? Yeah. That's when you left your parents' house? Yeah, well, from the time when I left my parents' house, uh, the first building was like that one. Th that one? Yeah. That was uh, my first building from the time when I left my father's home. So from there, after I was successful in my businesses and in my operations, then uh, that's when I came to build this one. At the same time, I built that white house, mm. so it has just been renovated, but I built it for my father. Yeah. How? So oh, I, after building him that home, then I left this place. The reason was uh, my father, he was very, very generous. That he, all the money which he was getting, he was just distributing to the needy. So after I had started my business, as a young man, I was living with him. So he would simply ask me, how much do we have in the bank? <laughs> An amount, then he would just say, go and get half. So within two weeks, all the money has been distributed to so many people. Then the other two, three weeks, he would say, what do we have? Go and get half. So within three months, we could run out of money. So giving, by just giving to people? We just giving to the people who were uh, asking him for help. So after learning what he was doing, then I said, well, I think I need to leave this place and go somewhere and build myself uh, so that I can withstand with this situation. So I left this place, I went to Nkotakota, which is about uh, three, four hours from here. <laughs> so I stayed in Nkotakota for a number of years until uh, I was strong enough economically mm. that I could stand with this situation. So I decided to come back in the, uh, that was in 1991. So from 1991, then by then I had the trucks, I had the, my business doing very well. So uh, instead of coming to the village, I had to stop at the Madisi trading center. Then at Madisi, uh, I became so successful that I decided to leave my DC for the capital city Lilongo. So I've been in Lilongo for many years. Now that's when I'm saying, okay, where do I come from? Then I have to go back now to square one. So now that building is represented this one. You came back yeah. to your roots exactly. and you transform the whole community. Yeah, so uh, that's, where, uh, that's why I'm saying I've come up with a plan. How can we make everybody prosperous in this area? So I'm targeting now 20 kilometers radius from this area and I uh, have to involve everybody uh, to transform. What, what are the things that you've done so far in the village since you came back? Well, I have managed to build roads. My aim is to develop this area. Mm. And uh, when I'm done with this area, I think I will help other areas where I can. So I've managed to build 
uh, all these roads here. All the roads? Yeah, in this area. Does it mean it was a path? It was just a small path. So I had to grade them and gravel them and uh, some small bridges. I think when we be going this side, uh, there's a, a sizable river, uh, even a belt uh, for the three meter bridge. Yeah, so I had to use the wood to build it, but big trucks, they use that. And this road is connecting the other road to this side. So now people have access to do business and the other things using this road. You remember when you used to go to school without shoes? Yeah. I guess this was the path that you still use. Yeah, it was a small path. Were you not scared walking in the bush those times? Well, since uh, people were very friendly in those days, yeah. we were just afraid of animals, but the people were just uh, very generous. Wow. Yeah, so uh, even uh, to bring a car here, it was a, a challenge. Yeah, sometimes uh, we could leave uh, a car somewhere and walk uh, five kilometers to our home uh, after we had already bought our own car. <laughs> so I had to work on these things in order to improve this area. Uh, we managed to build a police station somewhere and now I'm building a second one here. I've managed to acquire money to build the School of Agriculture. I built this school in six months. <laughs> what do you mean you built the school in six months? Yeah. How? Well, I had brought so many builders, so many uh, laborers, and I had assigned them that if you build this, this is what I'll give you. If you build this, this is what I'll give you. So many people came, they started working, and my trucks were busy hauling bricks, sand, whatever. Wow. Yeah. You, you build the school with a community? Yeah, I built this school. Why the name School of Agriculture? I told you for family independence. That the people were dying of hunger in 2001. Hmm. So I said, well, we have water, we have good climate, we have good land. Why can't we start using the resources which God has given us to solve our problems? So that's why I came up with an idea of building school of agriculture. That's your father's name? Yeah, my father's name. And who is Blake? Yeah, well, he's the one who had donated the money. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had asked him that I have this dream. Hmm. So I want to build a, a school which will just be teaching people. Then he said, okay, I will assist you. So he gave me $250,000. So I had to use my brain to use that money to build the school. And how many students have passed through this school? Each year, it's about 78 students. Wow. So, you know, we take families. So when I was saying 35 to 40, it means those were uh, families. But uh, since each one of them is a student, then you multiply by two, you come up with eight. Yeah. So since 2006 to date, so many people have gone through here and uh, their lives have changed. They have enough food and uh, they have built good homes and some of them have even managed to buy mm. cars. So um, this is a, a university? Well, it's something like uh, uh, 
something like a college. A college. Yeah, where we just bring in uh, at least one in the family should know how to light. Yeah. So it, just one person in the family needs to learn how yeah, to write. Exactly. The rest so is just oral. Yeah. yeah. It's the, does it mean there's no qualification to attend to this? Well, school? here qualification is you have to know how to, to write. write. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. And wh what about the tuition? Well, what we do here because uh, we have people who have been helping the school with some funds. Then he, he comes in. We send trucks to collect his family and the goods to this school. So when he comes here, we give, we provide a home with electricity and water. We provide fertilizer, seeds, whatever. Then he, he spends the whole year here. By the end of the year, after harvest, then he's asking me just to leave two bags of maize. I get to shoot me. You provide everything? We provide everything. So after providing everything, even the transportation, and by the time he will be going back home, then we will collect some of his maize, some of his granites on the tracks, send him back to his original village. And we spend lots of money to do that. But for him to be proud that he had paid something, then he had to give us to back to me. I want to see uh, the accommodation you've created for them. Is it in the same school area? We have a dormitory over there. We have those small houses you have seen all over. Those are the houses for the family. Guys. So it means even the land, you provide the land for them? Everything you provide for them in order for them to learn. And uh, the same thing uh, is happening at the Sante. I told the people that uh, our economy is agro-based economy. So being agro-based economy, it means you, those guys who are in investors for agriculture, they are the guys who are supposed to be in the forefront to develop the systems in the country. But when the, the, those guys complete their education, they just go back to their villages and they stay waiting for a job. So I'm saying, no, you guys come here. I will find a loan to support you to produce enough chickens, enough eggs, potatoes, tomatoes, whatsoever, for one year. Then after one year, then uh, we'll see how much money you have made. Then you give back all the expenses so that you can give back to the bank where I'll get the money. Then 70% of the profit, the student has to take it home so that he can duplicate what he was doing in my campus. That way, now he will be creating jobs uh, for each people. So, uh, in Twix, 55 students uh, from the university have come. They are at Sante. So now I'm saying, you guys, you can see that we have hunger because the rains were too heavy and the fertilizer was washed away. So what you should be seeing is that the people are going to suffer because of the hunger, which is looming. So you should not just be looking at the negative part of hunger. It is an opportunity for you to grow potatoes, to grow sweet potatoes, to grow some maize on irrigation. So that by the time when people will have nothing, then you have a broader way of collecting so much money from the people and provide them with the food. Then you guys, from nothing, you are going to be something.
they got nursery school in here. I mean, I even see playgrounds for kids, so definitely, indeed, it's a nursery school. But I don't know if the kids are also learning about agriculture in here. Are the kids learning how to farm? Yeah, well, they just see their parents, but the, the kids are taught what they are supposed to be taught. Wow. But the, uh, as we bring the whole family, the mother and the, the father, they are in class, so the children learn here so that they can also learn what they are supposed to. He has made sure that no family will be left out. So even if you have kids, they won't come here without going to school. I, believe me, this is the best story I've ever done. Like, I'm so blown away. I was not ready for this story, but what I keep hearing, I've seen they're using electricity and water. Do yeah. they pay for that too? No, they don't pay. You do all of that? Well, uh, School of Agriculture, uh, because of what we have been doing, uh, we have some people who are sponsoring okay. uh, for the school. But uh, I did everything. And now uh, I'm looking at uh, how can I empower this area economically because I've tried and many, many students, uh, many, many students uh, who had no fees in this area, they have been funded for more than uh, 10 years. So we have many who have gone to university, to secondary school, well, uh, over a thousand students have been provided with fees from uh, all over the region. You are also building a hotel yeah. with a man-made lake right in front, yeah. which will attract so many people coming in here. Exactly. And uh, I think uh, I will also have to come up with the fountains, water fountains, and um, also planning of uh, having a lot of activities in this area so that the people in Lilongwe and the other areas during weekends, they have to be coming here and spend their time. What, what is the idea behind this hotel? Well, the idea is uh, we have people with money in town and the other areas of the world. But how can they bring their money here? So that's why I said, I think I have to put up something which should be very attractive so that when people come with money, our local people now can manage to sell their oranges, their bananas, their potatoes, whatever they produce. Then by the time these people will be leaving this area back to their village, at least a small amount of money now our people uh, will get it. Trust me, where the hotel is, if you tell me that, okay, come all the way from Lilongwe to this place, I'll tell you I'm not coming. Yeah. But when you get here, yeah. what you see, yeah. the air you breathe in, yeah. the surrounding, I mean, you won't believe that this is sitting in a village. This is the best place for you to stay. It's called um, Kalipano. Kalipano. Yeah, Kalipano means it is here. So you, you even build churches, different denomination or? Oh well, yeah. Are you Catholic yourself? No. And you built a Catholic church? Yeah. Well, I'm building anything in this area. I want this area to be a model. You know, I suffered a lot. Hmm. So I had gone through a such difficult life that it's difficult to explain. So I should not let others go through the same. You built a great legacy. Even though you're saying that you've done nothing, but what I'm seeing this is a great legacy 
that it will forever remain till that kingdom come? Well, yeah, it seems to be like that, but uh, you know, it takes one man to change the area. So I feel if I could see this road paved, if I could see many graduates coming from this area, then uh, when I'm gone, then I will see that I have left some people who are taking my place and go ahead with what I had left. So that's how I feel. Can you please adopt me? Well, I think what you are learning from me today will help you be like me. I love it. Sure. Thank you. Inside the same village, he has built a maize mill for the community for free. So the whole community comes in here to mill the maize. But even him, when he was growing up, he has to walk for a very long distance to go mill his maize. But this is what he has done for the villagers. He's touching a lot of lives in here, man. There was nothing like this in here. He built it for them. I have traveled over 20 countries in Africa, but I've never seen anyone who eats Mouse. That's a mouse. That's not a yeah, rat. Yeah. You know, in Ghana we eat rats. The bush one. Oh, yeah, this is the bush one. This is the bush one. Yeah. This is from the bush. Yeah, from the bush. But this is too small. Yeah. Well, <laughs> from the bush they are too small, but the rats are big. Ha! Huh? Because the rats have all the food they need. So bush ones, they don't have enough food. They don't grow. So did much. you roast this? Yeah, they, it's roasted. Ah, 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 no, yeah. no, 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 not today, not today, <laughs> no, not today, ah, yeah. no, not today. Yeah. So you, you sell it? Uh, yeah. Yes. One, yeah. one? Yes, yeah. How much is it? 200. Sorry, man. I try everything, yeah. but I don't want to try this one. <laughs> I try everything, but I don't want to try this one. Yeah, but ah, <laughs> ah, they, they call it the African sausage. Yeah, yeah African yeah. sausage. African sausage. <laughs> 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 ah, the African sausage. Woo. Yeah. Jeez. Where, where do you find them? Yeah, in the bush. In the bush. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I, I eat everything, but yeah. this one. I'm scared. Yeah. Oh. Nah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Do you guys want to try it out? Yeah.